Hello and good afternoon friends. Welcome to CEC Live Transmission. Dear friends, today in this session, we would be continuing our series on disaster management and specifically we are going to talk on flood disasters, the flood management uh, where we would be discussing the impact and uh, mitigation of a flood disaster. And for this discussion, we have once again with us in our studios, Professor R.B. Singh. Professor R.B. Singh is from uh, Delhi School of Economics, University of uh, Delhi. Uh, dear friends, if you want to ask questions on flood disaster from uh, Professor R.B. Singh, then you can call straight in the CC studio and uh, for that you need to contact us through our toll free number. The number is 1-800-110-430. This is the number through which you can ask questions from Professor R.B. Singh. But yes, you are requested to call in the last 10 minutes so that the lecture is also listened carefully as well as your questions are also resolved. So let's welcome Professor R.B. Singh once again and let's try to get deep insight into the topic that is flood, disaster, impact and mitigation. Hello sir, welcome to the lecture. Thank you Gitika ji. Dear viewers, in continuation of our various discussion relating to Sendai framework of disaster risk reduction. Today we are going to discuss flood disaster, its impact and we will try to have mitigation measures. I will also try to bring before you few case studies from Uttarakhand area, Bihar, Jammu Kashmir. Floods are very important disaster in our country. We are facing problem almost every year. It is called annual ordeal in northern India. This year many states like Bihar, Assam, they are facing very severe threat due to this disaster. Many people are very much linked with agriculture. And agriculture is very severely affected by this disaster. So it poses a very enormous impact on Indian economy and society. I would like to introduce this term floods as you know more most frequent and very severe natural disaster. Conditions causing flood include heavy and steady rain for several hours or days that saturates the ground. You might be knowing flash floods also occur in many parts of Himalaya, particularly in Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh. A flood is an excess of water on land which is normally dry and is a situation wherein the inundation is caused by high flow or overflow of water such as a river, a stream, drainage due to the rainfall. Flooding may result from volume of water within a body of water such as a river or lake which overflow or break levees with the result that some of the water escape its usual boundaries. I would like to take few definition of flood and but first I would like to chow. I quote, a flood is a relatively high flow which overtakes the natural channel provided by the runoff, provided for the runoff. I would like to another definition, I quote, a flood is an any high stream flow which overtops natural or artificial banks of a stream. According to MSN in Carta 2006, a flood is an overflow of water that submerges land. So ultimately in this disaster, water overflow on the land, this may be due to the rainfall due to some local factors, breaking of dike, 
European Union Flood Directive 2007 define flood is a covering by water of land not normally covered by water. Then I would like to bring before you few conceptual framework and I would like to start with floods itself. Floods, floods are viewed as the most destructive of all naturally triggered disasters, but natural factor may be rainfall, but it deforestation accelerates the process of flooding in any area by encouraging runoff. So, sometime urbanization, rapid rate of urbanization used to bring also the uh, flooding and as you know many cities are getting up this problem recent years, in recent years. Flood frequency, it defines the hydrological events in terms of its return period event which through a statistical analysis projects a probability that in how many years a flood similar magnitude will occur again. Hydrometeorological analysis, it provides a purpose of documentation, detection and quantification of climate variability and change. While meteorological factors a play a fundamental role in these processes, geological strata, landscaping processes, structural elements, topographic settings are decisive in the complexation of storage, storage changes. And in this context, we do vulnerability analysis, resilient flood risk management. Vulnerability analysis, this can be defined as a the loss of a given element or a given set of element resulting from occurrence of a natural disaster and this case may be the flood. Resilience is a emerging a very, very important particularly after Sendai framework of disaster risk reduction. It is defined as the ability of a system, community or ecosystem which is exposed to hazards so as to resist, absorb, accommodate and recover from the effects of a hazard in a judicious and efficient manner. It also includes preservation and restoration of its essential basic structure and function. And so, we have to do analysis of flood risk management, take into consideration of the many biophysical and human factors. This includes the process of flood risk management comprising or combining the analysis to determine the risk objectively by analyzing and combining probability and negative consequences of floods to understand perception of floods. So, in nutshell, I would like to say a flood is a hydrological event characterized by high discharges or high end or high level that can lead to inundation of land adjacent to streams, rivers, lakes, wetlands and other water bodies. A relatively high flow or a stage in a river mark high than the usual as per the International Commission of Irrigation and Drainage. It also includes the inundation of lowlands which may result there. Floods may be caused by natural events or by human activity or by combination of both. I would like to bring before you different types of floods. First, predictable regular flooding, generally up to 3 months, blocks excess damage and displacement of population, often relatively low depending on the level of protection, increased size of regular flooding up to 6 months, blocks access to many areas, greater potential for infrastructure damage, livelihood impact and large displacement of people. Flash flooding, these days we are getting particularly in the hilly area, 
a few days to week rapid cresting often with little warning high velocity flood flow can destroy infrastructure population displacement often localized urban flooding this is becoming also a new phenomena in india chennai earlier mumbai many cities in rajasthan got this a few days to week can be rapid onset often coming from flash flood in urban rivers or from saturation or blockage of urban drainage system coastal flooding occurred for few days often combined with wind uh, damage from a storms damage and displacement along coastlines with extent depending on a storm size age slow onset from sustained rainfall 3 to 6 month depending on season damage to crops may be very significant population displacement is limited i would like to identify or summarize different causes of floods as you know it may be natural it may be human or it may be combination of both <coughs> intense rainfall when the river is flowing full excessive rainfall in river catchments or concentration of runoff from tributary and river carrying flow in excess of their capacity cyclone and very intense rainfall when in lino effects is on decline synchronization of flood peaks in main rivers for or their tributaries landslides leading to obstruction of flow and change in the river course poor natural drainage system backing water in tributary at their confluence with main river here i would like to classify the different direct and indirect factors first meteorological factor including rainfall cyclonic storms small scale storms temperature snowfall snow melt hydrological factor soil moisture level very important ground water level prior to storms natural surface infiltration rate presence of impervious cover channel cross sectional shape high tide impending drainage and human factors top most you can say land use change obstructing flow inefficiency breaking the dike sudden release of water from dams failure to release water from dams you can see here the flooding system in an environment and what this also shows that how we can you know risk management system we can develop and in this context we have to see the stock of land use system exposure of property and elements in that area infrastructure coastal defense flood banks water courses storage reservoir these are the some of the important input and then storms wind direction these are also the very very important and natural flood mechanism here you can see the location within the catchment how the upland lowland interaction you know uh, play a very important role in this context because deforestation in highland area or the himalaya can bring deep uh, instability in the low lying area so up stream down stream we have to see the up stream down stream relationship in this context so largely this may be the very very important factors but i would like to bring a very important uh, point like urban flooding urbanization you know now present century is known as asian urban century asia got a lot of mega cities metropolitan cities class 1 cities and this is posing an enormous challenge for city administrators planners policy makers of which urban floods are increasingly becoming a very important challenge because of the weak drainage system urban floods are a result of inadequate or poor maintenance of storm water drains 
improper planning, encroachment on drains of water bodies, occupation of low-lying area, modification of catchments, and sometimes the climate change also. So, urban flooding is typically characterized by increase in flood peak by 2 to 8 times, increase in flood volumes by up to 6 times, decrease in time required to reach flood peak, excessive economic losses in the form of damage of property or less of productivity. And so that is why we have to bring innovation in geospatial technology. And science can play a very important role. Global community, international uh, global network of science academy, earlier UNISDR also in Gen uh, January 2016, they organized a big meeting, role of science and technology for uh, Sendai framework of disaster risk reduction. In this context, I would like to mention the forecasting rainfall and flood incidence, flood generation map and integrated flood management, calculating the river and sea erosion, real-time flood monitoring. These are very, very important because generally most of the floods in North India occur in uh, monsoon time and very, very important to have also the better satellite imagery, microwave, remote sensing can play a very important role. And then we can develop the effective response and communication needed for uh, disaster management. In this context, estimating the expected interruption cost and calculate community recovery times and in this context, risk analysis is very, very important estimating the number of people who are likely to seek shelter, forecasting and warning is very, very important. Response capability we have to build, select low risk zone from which your response and recovery efforts can be staged by overlaying hazards and risk maps. And then finally collect and catalog and estimate disaster damage, losses, needs and impact. Here I would like to give the how the flood wa early warning system can be developed, flood hydrological and climatic data in real time one can collect and then flood characterization and flood management policy on the other hand. And then we can have flood detection system, flood forecast system, assessment of flood hazard and time available, flood management decision support system, warning system, flood response. So that is why the topographical data rainfall data, relief data, land use data, these all are very, very important. And remote sensing, new geographic information, public participation also can be done in this context. As you know, disaster is equal to hazard plus vulnerability minus capacity. So we have to also the improve the capacity of individual, resilience capacity. This is defined as the probability or threat to quantifiable damage, injury, liability, loss. And this can be avoided by the pre-emptive action. Disaster response is the initial and immediate measure that is to be taken in order to reduce the aftermath of the disaster and restore order. And so we can promote the disaster management. Disaster management uh, activities are the various measures which are undertaken to eliminate the risk and impact of disaster. Vulnerability analysis, in this context, the flood vulnerability mapping, it is very important to consider the socioeconomic parameters with natural factors are to be considered. For attempting vulnerability analysis, we here use an indicator based approach and within the framework of multi-criteria analysis if you are using under the GIS framework. Social components are associated with presence of human population and different characteristics. When flood-like situation arises, it becomes a vulnerable condition. The adverse conditions are often <coughs> indicated through loss of livelihood or loss of property. And these all can be analyzed under the multi-criteria analysis using the remote sensing data, particularly for land use and the real-time weather information 
and where separate weights have been assigned to different socioeconomic parameter depending on their levels and importance of vulnerability. And in this context we have to assess the vulnerability, we cannot forget the vulnerable population, particularly I would like to mention children, women, old people, half widows, disabled, these are the very very important and I think we must you know take care of these uh, uh, socially vulnerable group. Different section of society face different challenges in dealing with different aspects of flood and so it comprises physical, socio-economic, political factor which adversely affect the ability of community to respond to events. This can be measured in terms of how a person or group react in terms of their capacity to anticipate and so that is why the vulnerability includes the socio-economic vulnerability and the physical vulnerability. It is necessary to have a distinction between physical vulnerability arising from exposure and social characteristics related to vulnerable people like children, women, old people, half widow. What are the important vulnerability analysis consideration? Need to focus on degree of loss of damage, focus attention on important element, concentrated population, life-life communication system, economic activity and resources, areas of development importance, infrastructure, production facility or productive system. Now I would like to also mention how we can develop the mitigation measures and in this context we have to develop the short term measures and long term measures. And disaster mitigation is very, very important and we must promote take into consideration of opinion of academic community, policy makers and, and so we should have a multidisciplinary uh, team or officials, you know, urban planners, engineers, environmentalists, flood control department. Operalization the flood early warning system, this is very important particularly to reducing the risk, ensure alternative flood channel, strengthening the embankment along the river, many times occur this like you know you will remember in Kosi, this was a very very important damage of dike and you know uh, it brought a very severe disaster. Uh, dredging or desilting uh, activity to be taken up wherever needed, a stopping illegal construction encroachment of land particularly along the streams, rivers, training the common people for proper flood risk reduction, flood ambulance for door to door service on boats particularly during disaster, taking help of academic institution and research based organization to undertake the mapping of flood. Uh, uh, vulnerability donation. While coming to the long term measures, <coughs> I think in this context preventive measures is very very important. It is called prevention is better than cure. And so community based preventive, uh, preventive disaster management plan is very important. Collaboration with local bodies for proper cohesive coordination to deal with the disaster and in this context we can involve the Panchayati Raj institution or local self uh, government you know in urban local bodies, capacity building program for building public awareness, check the developmental activity and mining activity along the banks of the river, uh, land use policy to be revised to minimize human and economic loss stemming up out of regions like increased concretization, large scale afforestation should be implemented to restore the lost balance, flood proofing with more efficient land use control in the catchment area such as tree planting, gully control, terracing, sloping. Now I would like to bring few minutes on what is the state of situation at world level and this diagram you can see the percentage of occurrence of natural disaster by different disaster type and you can see this the how 
generally occurrence if you see the total number of occurrence almost 43% 3062 during this period due to flood uh i would like to take another important figures number of people killed by disaster type and in this context you can see here maybe not so much but at least 26% people 157 thousand people died due to this process you know a flood hazard so it is a very very important at a globally and also the locally nationally also so i would like to take few minute and uh, analyze also the some uh, important local now you can see this the world uh, quaternary floods and discharges even in the uh, uh, long back Uh, what happened in the past in different country russia usa canada major flood brazil usa and you know uh in late pleistocene pleistocene uh, scene period 1918 1953 if you will see this the all different years and sometime due to the a mechanism due to the ice dam failure sometime lake overflow sometime landslides induce you know rainfall induce uh, so more recently we are getting the land, uh, rainfall induce flood uh, and these are the different differences given you know what happened in the uh, history and a uh, peak discharge level you know i will take this another you know particularly the discharge uh, discharge in the millions of cubic meter per second these are the different you know uh, lakes and the river and you can see this the uh, particularly in the amazon several occur due to the rainfall in the uh lena river largely due to the ice jam and snow melt region in uh, ani ani chunk you know uh, caldera lake breach then sub glacial volcanic eruption particularly in the uh, katla region then indus uh, uh, area also the landslides dam failure lake basin overflow in lok bonaville uh, pro glacial lake overflow again in lake agassiz uh, two times and then you know ice dam failure many in, in the past and you can see this the uh, lake agassiz uh, wabash river lake rezaina Uh, all the suffer due to the ice dam failure here you can see the data like a world largest meteorological floods from the river basin larger than about uh, 500000 square kilometer and you can see this river basin all different country brazil egypt uh, uh, usa russia pakistan iraq china senegal all the occur i would like to and largely due to the rainfall if you will see this the flood type is a rainfall or a snow melt induced rain, uh, uh, you know uh, flooding in this now i would like to take a few minutes on the uh, uh, taking analyzing the india uh, and you can see here this the india also Uh, uh, we got the 21 china 38 us 31 again top 10 disaster if you will see we had the uh, events different and different dates you can see and india uh, bold so india faces a big disaster we have the 16 of the world population but only the 2.4% of world land mass but 68% uh, 8.8% land vulnerable to cyclone and may be flooding occur 
than 12 percent land vulnerable to flood. And so, many areas uh, highly vulnerable like you know uh, uh, Himalaya, Himalayan range, then western coast, western ghat, Khasi hills, these are the some of the area. Thank you very much. Continuation of our discussion on flood disaster. In this section, I would like to focus on India. I would like to see the impact, and then we will try to see the how we can have the uh, different type of mitigation measures, what we can do, what type of response mechanism we can develop. You heard already different type of mitigation measures can be done in Indian a contest, but I would like to take more specifically in India. Particularly if you will see this the data 2005 to 14, many floods occurs, Odisha floods, Andhra floods, uh, Uttarakhand floods, Assam, Kosi floods, Maharashtra floods, particularly in uh, Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh, uh, 4094 people died. In the Kosi flood also was very devastating in 2008, North Bihar, and many 527 deaths, 9, 000, uh, 19,323 livestock perished, many people, more 200,000 people, you know. Uh, million people actually uh, displaced, many houses damaged, many million persons affected. If you take the analyze the data between the 1950 through 11 average area affected, we had that 7,225 million hectare. Crop area 3,789 million hectare. Our is mainly the agricultural based country and you can see this the so much area affected due to this average. So, you can understand your uh, from your own perception type of problem we are getting population, cattle loss, houses damage, lot of you know uh, uh, people damage not only in rural area, but many cities were affected by flood, Ahmedabad 2001, Bangalore 2005, 9 and 13, Chennai 2004 and 15, Delhi 2002, 3, 9, 10, 13, 16, Guwahati 10 and 11, Hyderabad. So, you can see all mega cities are facing a big problem and we have to evolve a very important mechanism for uh, you no know, response capability for this. Now you can see this the flood affected area hazard map, particularly spreading over Indus system, Ganga system, and Brahmaputra system. And then we have the coastal area, and little bit on in the uh, Gujarat and Rajasthan uh, area in Rajasthan, Maharashtra, 
border in inset you can see this the how that what happened during the Cosi due to the damage in the dike how this total course changed and diverted the whole course of Cosi diverted towards the different direction and a large part of Bihar was very severely affected and you, you have seen. Brahmaputra passage problem you can see I am taking a photo, photograph from flood environment the type of people live in that area uh, they evolve you know a different type of threatened you know biodiversity by flooding in fluvial environment you can see here that how in Kachiranga National Park this photographer and Rhinoso you know uh, uh, very severely affected many times they died due to the flooding and so not only the human life but the endemic nature of you know biodiversity uh, we lost due to the flooding particularly in Brahmaputra. Here you can see this the how the Banama stem the people used for you know uh, uh, moving from one local you know adaptation method during the flood drainage problem due to congestion in Dibrugar city uh, this city faces a big problem lack of powder due to you know uh, flooding and so flood forecasting is a very very important we have to strengthen this flood forecasting and here academic input is very important flood forecasting is should not be only based on the rainfall pattern or discharge level in full inflow uh, of the water particularly in the high fall season but we have to see the total landscape land use system construction activity situation of uh, embankments and the dikes now you can see we ganga and tributary we have 70 uh, one station brahmaputra and tributary 27 station uh, Godauri 13 but even then we face lot of problem I think a strong academic input is very very important where we can take a lesson based on the data coming from remote sensing and we can put under the GIS system. In this context I would like to tell you how we can predicting the erosion risk. Erosion risk is a very very important because where we will have the more erosion risk, we will have the more sediment load. So if this erosion risk map of the Chakrata area in Tones, you know, or Jamuna river basin area, we have taken the land use system, uh, rainfall pattern, uh, 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 soil characteristics, and taken to combining this under the GIS system, it is possible to have you can see where we have the most scarcely vulnerable area, moderately vulnerable, highly vulnerable, extremely vulnerable. Extremely vulnerable area should be avoided particularly for the any type of land use and construction activity. So such type of education need to be the transfer to the city. Here also we calculated the river Ram Ganga uh, using the remote sensing and GI system, the flood monitoring, you know, uh, that the area affected by flood, um, number of villages affected by flood, uh, on that basis the people affected, such type of the ma maps, flood zoning maps is a very important for efficient management of recurring flood because even relief operation can be undertaken on that basis. Then also take into consideration of the data from I supervised few MPhil students, you know, in Brahmaputra Basin, also in the Kashmir uh, this, uh, last, you know, flood. And, you know, we calculated a lot of vulnerability index. And this vulnerability index, you know, collected on the, from the people. They provided the data. We asked the questionnaire based on the questionnaire reason. And you see this the highly vulnerable, moderately vulnerable, and here different category, you know, and index we have developed a number of vulnerable issues. 26 issues were identified under the highly vulnerable. And this is based on the people's knowledge, indigenous knowledge. 
Here you can see this is the few important example I would like to give you uh, from our study from Brahmaputra region. One time in prior crop loss, three time in tire a standing crop loss, loss of a store seed, a seed bed erosion, sand deposition. You know, these are the some of the important, you know, and this recent my visit to Debrugar also I asked many, you know, discussion with the many people and we found, you know, cattle loss, pig loss, all different type of data, you know, you know, livestock, storage lack, uh, uh, latrine washed away, tube well washed away, cropland loss. So, you know, in this way, it is possible we can communicate properly to policy makers. It is very, it is a responsibility of academic community to communicate properly to the policy makers. And in this way, this is the method, you know. Here we can uh, calculate it for the uh, Uttarkasi area. Vulnerability assessment in the uh, mountain, you know, take into consideration of the landslides risk, flood risk, avalanche age, and we combine together. And you can see where we have the high risk area, high, very high, high, moderate, low, very low. Such type of maps can be given to the people and even planner, uh, 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 you know, local level planners, district administration, they can take help particularly for very high or high risk area for plantation purpose. I would like to give you the one example of the Son Karam Nasa interflow in Bihar, you know, Bihar facing the problem. This one case study from South Bihar, integrated flood management. How, you know, this the, even the drought and flood, you know, management can go side by side and can be uh, together, integrated. You know, here this map, you can see, this map is a, 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 a you know, combination of the remote sensing data and the GIS data take into consideration of the different time period, you know, uh, rabi or kharif crops. We try to, you know, identify the potential land use, built up area, water body, a forest, double cropped area, horticulture area, agro horticulture, afforestation, sand bar, gap filling, where we can do the gap filling. So, you know, in this type of integrated map or multifunctional map, because this can be used for the uh, drought also and the flood also. Because in country like India, we must integrate this, you know, long time back. Also the uh, interlinking of river, you know, by our ex-Prime Minister Bajpayee started, but recently now again this uh, program is started and it is very important that linking of river should be started within a state. Within a state like a UP, we have the water surplus area, water deficit area. Why not we can link within the state? Same thing in Bihar, same in West Bengal. So, I, in this way we can do, you know, we can have the more multiplier effects. Dear colleague, and viewers, I would like to take a very important case study, case of Kashmir flood. This recently I supervised a, uh, a MPhil thesis on this and I would like to give you the, some important findings. Floods in Srinagar is not an uncommon phenomena due to excessive runfall and a snow melt in the upper catchment area of the Jhelum Basin. Floods in Srinagar are often the function of heavy encroachment of flood plains and excessive urbanization. As you know, those who visited the Srinagar in uh, 15 years back and now going, you can find a tremendous change in infrastructure development, road construction, various. So, ultimately encouraging runoff, heavy encroachment on the flood plain, excessive urbanization, huge pressure on the, uh, you know, population, uh, ever growing population. It is a still highly susceptible to flooding due to very high ground water level, heavy siltation in water bodies and lack of action after 2014 autumn severe flood. Therefore, the issue of future floods cannot be ruled out totally in this context and I think it, this is a very similar to what happened in a tsunami, last tsunami. We were not expecting but we had a so big. 
So, we are getting the very uh, high low probability and high impact event, low probability. You know, Kashmir flood maybe you can consider the low probability like you know in uh, tsunami, last tsunami, it was a low uh, uh, probability but very high impact. It is thus imperative that a well conducted study be accomplished to learn the state of vulnerability and prepare a strict disaster mitigation measure to prevent such future disaster. This is the map. Flooding mechanism particularly we must analyze the hydrological characteristics. River rising from a spring in Verinog at the bottom of a high scrap mountain a spur of the Pir Panjal range. It flow into Srinagar city and then leaves the city to join the Ullar lake. All along its course the river is characterized by two main features the sluggish flow and the highly uh, taut to a course which is the outcome of both topographical and hydrolo hydraulic factor. The safe carrying capacity of Jhelum from Sangam to Ullar lake ranges from 40,000 to 50,000 cusack and through the Srinagar city only about 35 cusack. So, you can understand from your own perception the type of anomaly uh, characteristic in the char hydrologic characteristic we have. In Sangam to Srinagar 50,000 cusack through Srinagar 35,000 cusack, below Srinagar 17,000 cusack and so from your own perception you can find it is very important for us to have a better you know river catchment management policy you know not taking to consideration of the river bed but also the surrounding area. Here you can see this the damage caused by the flood in Rajbagh area, Srinagar, inundation and Lal Chowk area, an electric substation under water, all communication system, it was a very severe impact and impact was more due to the uh, uh, low probability and high impact factor. Hydrological meteorological condition if you see a starting from a tip 5 to you know every year 2014 the total discharge was the 36,716 cusacks, you know very high that area. Rainfall was 893, you know millimeter. Rainfall is a very important factor, but another important factor is a high runoff due to an urbanization or and sometime also the rainfall occurring in few days, you know, it poses, it used to bring a lot of problem through the highland lowland interactive system or upstream downstream relationship. Now you can see rainfall and average discharge 85 to 2000, so a direct relationship between the two showing a positive correlation between this the rainfall and discharge. Discharge to rainfall ratio from 85 to 30 so more or less an increasing trend you know over the period of 30 years. Discharge to rainfall and again in this context the deforestation can be very very important. You know rainfall micro level if you will see micro level you can't find much difference but the micro level we have a lot of difference because of the changes into uh, due to the anthropogenic activity. Anthropogenic activity in the form of uh, deforestation, massive land usage, intensive land usage. Discharge to rainfall ratio is calculated to show how much the rainfall affect the discharge of the river. So, we are living in the uncertainty. Uncertainty from macro to the micro level. My, micro level if you will see rainfall is becoming a very very dominant, natural factor becoming very dominant, but when you are coming to the catchment level, micro level, uh, micro level then anthropogenic factors are becoming more prominent. 
Now you can see here the discharge acusic level on 2014 72,585 Q6. Uh, then you know the period return period the one year was very important. Flood frequency analysis also used to predict the flood along the river. It is one of the most important factor to determining the flood vulnerability and the flood hazard. Flood frequency uh, calculates the flood occurrence or the return period of every peak discharge event. Extreme event calculator. If you, you know, calculate extreme events may not be, you cannot say that the uh, uh, Srinagar flood was extreme, but what I am bringing before you in recent years what we are getting the phenomena, the role of science and technology is very important because we are getting low probability and high impact event. Natural disaster have been increasing in recent decades, although there may be a lack of clear evidence that the actual frequency of extreme hazard events. When we calculate the result of such extreme events like flood or drought, we take into consideration the rainfall trend over a period of time. When uh, uh, unexpected and unpredictable pr uh, presentation, but in the case rains in September in Kashmir is not very uncommon. So that is why you have to see the different other factors uh, other than hydrological factors. And in this context, you can see this the different land use category residential area, what happened between 71 to uh, uh, 2011, 4.6 percent to 17.2 percent. Park, uh, 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 you know, vacant land 2.2 to 1.1, agriculture 61 to 46, you know, the forest 1.5 to 0 0.7. So you can see we have a tremendous change, land use pattern change over the years contributing to major increase in built up, you know, concretized area. So even it was not a very high extreme event, but it brought a significant impact. Encroachment of dialogue, we heard lot about the eutrophication problem from uh, in drill age sinking of marshes and faulty drainage system have led to more water logging and backlog uh, 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 problems. The sinking effect of the lakes due to the faulty urbanization process and encroachment on the water body increase the risk of flooding in the city. So this may be the also the some extent. So flood vulnerability analysis, it is a combination of indicator based approach multi-criteria analysis was used, physical and natural aspects together with demographic and socio-economic factors were taken into consideration. Methods of GIS, remote sensing and special statistics are applied to analyze a variety of data sets from different sources in order to obtain information about the vulnerability of these elements. In this ranking methods, Every criteria that is chosen is ranked on a basis of decision makers preferences to self perception. So, you know, various methods from the flood department officials and a, a, a comprehensive questionnaire were prepared and different stoke, a stakeholders were taken to responses taken into consideration. Now, you here you can see this multi criteria analysis. We have taken the elevation population density, different type of density, households, characteristic, literacy rate, total female population, population below age of 6 particularly uh, you know vulnerable population, working population, total non working population, urban amenities, different subclass were prepared and then the rank similarly rank were given between the 1 to 5 and a composite index, you know, uh, uh, here and map, a special mapping done, here you can see the highest, highly vulnerable area, you know, largely occurred in Bemina, West, Idgah area, 
uh, mainly in uh, the uh, central part, medium in Sahid Ganj, uh, Harwan, Palpura, uh, both dull. This is located in large part in you know uh, in, the, in the central part of the uh, in the most of the southern part and the western part and some northern part of the city and then the lowest vulnerable area dara uh, uh, kumarbari nisat ali kadal these all least vulnerable area largely located in the eastern side northern side and some part of the central side Impact of the floods, loss of life, people residing in low-lying areas, almost 75,000 people were you know, evacuated, a street of Srinagar's were approached with carcasses of animals, some parts of Srinagar's, you know, Bemina, Jawahar Nagar, Lal Chowk, all were very severely affected loss of infrastructure, most household in the inundated area uh, were about 3 to 5 lakh, you know, estimation, total estimation, about 16,000 kilometers of road were damaged. Lala Dutt Hospital, which used to have 150 deliveries per bed, was two storage under water. Schools were shut for about 6 to 7 months. Airport runway was also under water. Loss of communication that is a usual characteristic during the disasters. The main power grid of city was you know submerged. After five days, Rawal Pora grid became functional. Uh, roads were not accessible. So it brought a lot of you know impact on the economy, and you can see this the agriculture and allied activity which contribute to about 20 percent of the state GDP faced a severe problem due to flooding, due to SHM, you know, estimation. The crops had been damaged and so were the food stock. Loss of livelihood, no transaction took place, shops got ruined. Tourism is a very important, you know, source of livelihood of the people earning of the local area and that was the very, and September is a very important method. Impact of environment deforestation in large scale, clogging of water, surrounding were filled with debris, soil had been super saturated, being water, water, ground water level has gone up and the silt deposited in the course of this flood. And so that is why brought a different type of the problem. Vulnerable population like Menui rescue operation, women and children were uh, you know, first evacuated, they were rescued and so naturally, you know, uh, vulnerable population were given uh, proper care. Army played a very important role in this uh, contest. Most women and children are emotionally dependent on the male head of the household and sometimes, you know, separated with each other for many days and they face the mental trauma. Old people are mostly dependent on the household honor and so they face. You know, if you see this re response in a lot of, you can see this the National Disaster Management Authority and Disaster Management Task uh, uh, Response Force, you know, came into action very quickly and uh, uh, this for raising awareness, carrying this resource and evacuation. Road of media was also very important role of Radio Kashmir and uh, they disseminated news quickly, they started the helpline, a live program. So this, that response was not bad, you know. Uh, you can see this, the state government response was a little bit slow. You can see here the children and elderly being rescued through the helicopter by the Indian Army. It was a great operation, I think, so far what happened armed forces with naval boats and air force planes and helicopters rescued stranded people. Lo rail role of local youth cannot be underestimated and many organizations, NGOs, civil society organizations, they played also the very important role in this complex. You know, role of 
uh, government, you know, funding of about rupees 100 crores were announced, you know, 87 camps for relief operation, you know, uh, taken measures. Uh, uh, they were provided 250 uh, kilogram of rice for six months for each household, you know, for fully damaged house, the 70,000 rupees, for semi damage, you know, 12,000, 25,000. It was not a, uh, you know, adequate, you know, for that. You can see the temporary repul measures. And so you can say that the in major findings that more than 75 po fusion, uh, uh, people, you know, were very, very severely uh, affected by this. And the uh, similar magnitude of research is 72,585 Qsec was the, you know. And I can say that the most important region in unplanned urbanization, land usage, urbanization, I think we must, you know, take care of encroachment of, uh, you know, wetlands, we should avoid, reduce deforestation. This, in this way, I think we can have the, and we can do the flood plan zoning, we can do the integrated flood management, and then we can promote the resilience measure. Thank you. Very With this note, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for giving us a productive session. Dear friends, we would be meeting again very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye.